Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode. I'm doing a guide because I've only started playing Marvel Snap recently. I created this Destroyer deck. It's been performing exceptionally well. And in addition, it only requires pull three cards. There are no pull four or five cards here. Uh, most cards are basic or pull two. I think it's one of the simplest decks to play out there. So I just wanted to do a quick guide to show you how I got to rank 80 with it. If you enjoy the deck and you create it and you climb, uh, please leave a like and subscribe and let's get down to the deck tech. The strategy of the deck is super simple. The deck relies on Destroyer being a surprise, being a 15 power, 6 cost card. Destroyer obviously has an ability that can destroy your whole board, so you have to play around it. So your strategy is to commit into two lanes only. One which we'll call the protected lane, which we will play cards like Armor in the beginning or Professor X at the end, and we'll lock down the location in a way that makes Destroyer not kill your whole board. The other lane is going to be the destroyer lane where you're going to play the destroyer and add a lot of power on the last turn and that's how you're going to win that lane. All of these cards are part of one of three groups. The first one is cards you want to play onto the protected lane. Cards like Sunspot, Daredevil, Armor, uh, which will make your lane protected, Captain America, um, Warpath, and maybe Hobgoblin. And obviously Obviously Professor X as well. These cards, you want to shove them all into a single lane, get a lot of power into that one lane, and win it just by having a lot of strong cards. Bucky Barnes and Colossus are cards that you want to play into your destroyer lane because obviously when you destroy Bucky Barnes, it adds six power to your lane. Colossus cannot be destroyed, so it's a safe card to play on that lane. The other cards are what I call disruption. You have Electra with which is not a card that a lot of people enjoy playing, but Electra is a very big surprise. It can destroy a one cost card, which is usually either Ant-Man or Sunspot, and it can really change the tides of the game, and it only costs one, and I really like Electra. It's really surprising people. Armor is also a disruption card. A lot of the time I enjoy keeping it and not playing it right off the bat because if I play against the destroy deck and I play armor, it's usually game over. And Cosmo, obviously the ultimate disruptor of unrevealed decks. Cosmo, if you have priority, you want to just shove Cosmo into Wong or any lane that you think they're going to play something and it's usually just game over. As for snapping, you usually want to snap on turn 5. If you have Daredevil on the board, you can see what the opponent is going to play on turn 5. And what that does is, is it allows you to understand how the game's going to go and turn 5 is usually enough to understand if you're going to win or lose. Also, a lot of the times you'll snap, they will say, well, okay, but I'm going to do a good move. You counter that move, just for example, they play Wong on turn four, you play Cosmo into it on turn five, and they just insta retreat. But you snapped prior, so you get two cubes instead of one. Uh, that happened a lot of games, so I usually snap on turn five. Also, turn six is obviously our strongest turn, so it's very rare that we lose on turn six. Six, meaning we were, we were winning on turn five and then we lose on six. Yeah, very, very simple. You want to choose a lane, usually a lane like Khmer Island or Nidavellir, something that makes your lane stronger, your card stronger, that loves, you know, numbers. This is the lane you're going to choose it as the protected lane. And then if there's a lane that favors having uh, less cards like Atlantis or a lane that doubles the power of the strongest card, that's where you want to play Destroyer because it almost always is the strongest card in the lane it's going to get the buff and it's going to win you the game now let's talk about matchups good matchups for us we usually beat um wong decks and patriot decks wong decks and patriot decks are decks that spread around the map and because we focus on only two lanes we usually win this lanes because when you only focus on two lanes um you have more power because it's less spread out and also cosmo a lot of the time can counter mystique or wong so these two decks we really win zabu is like 50 50 because zabu can be 
unbeatable sometimes given the right draw but zabu can also be ass and also um there's shang chi which can obviously kill destroyer so zabu is 50 50 and our worst matchup our counter is magneto magneto is horrible for us magneto decks run uh polaris which can take our armor a lot of the times if our lane is not locked with professor x it would like take our war path put it in the middle then destroyer is going to destroy it and we just lose instantly you know unless we lock the lane with professor x magneto is usually just instant gg because it destroys everything we do it just counters our our purpose um silver surfer is also a matchup that's important to talk about silver surfer it's for me the problem with silver surfer is that a lot of the time you don't see it coming you don't understand what you're playing against it doesn't click until the very end that this is a silver surfer deck and you've already played your your cosmo and it's very hard for us to play cosmo last turn because we want to play destroyer last turn so surfer it's not 50 50 it's more like a 40 percent win rate but it's not like we get crushed by silver surfer every time um so yeah these are the matchups i think until you get it 80 you have more than you know 60 70 percent win rate if you play it right so that's it that's pretty simple let's play some games and see how it goes All right, so Throne Room is a great lane to have Destroyer in because we usually have the card with the highest power. Another tip that I love giving is playing into uh, unrevealed locations. 99% of the time, it's fine. Uh, they play Angel, which means they're a Destroyer deck. And we see Titan, which is a good place for us. We can play Daredevil. It's a card that we always play on the open lane. The problem is that we want to play Captain America and Warpath. So maybe you want to play Colossus left, but we should be winning anyway. Maybe you should pass the turn. Let's just play Daredevil and pass the turn. They're playing Bucky Barnes, so they definitely want to destroy whatever is in the left lane. We have Vault. So we have armor, but they have initiative, meaning if we play armor left, they destroy the cards before we get to play it. So I think I'll play Captain America, hope to get initiative, hope they invest even more to the left and then play armor to give them a blowout. And they play Nova and Carnage. So, th so it's good that I didn't play armor because we would have just lost it. Um, now they don't have anything on the vault, so I can play Warpath there, but I want to have only two lanes. So another option I have is play armor here because we have to defend the lane. Or I can just play Colossus here and just pass a turn. Okay, they play Deathlock. We play Colossus. Turn five, we get Cosmo, but we don't have initiative. So it's going to be a lot weaker. They go Sabertooth right, which is fine. That means we have a couple options here. We can play Cosmo left, making Destroyer not kill our team. We can also play Armor and just let it float. I think Destroyer is enough to win the left lane. So we can Armor, let um, let Sunspot get even stronger. We can also play Cosmo, but I don't think there's anything they want to do. So let's just play Armor, pass the turn. And now late game, how not having initiative is good because it means that we cannot get shang chi So we just slam Destroyer and hope for the best. They play left, they play America Chavez, we play Destroyer and we get the bonus from Throne Room. And even though they have so much power because of Throne Room and because Destroyer is the strongest card, we get to win the game. And that's two cubes for free. Onslaught Citadel is a good place to be our protected lane. Pass the turn. They play Misty Knight, meaning they're going to be a Patriot deck, which is going to rely on Onslaught Citadel, but it means that Onslaught Citadel is not going to have a lot of power. Also, Wakandan Embassy is very bad for us because if they have Brood in their hand, it's going to be incredibly powerful. Also, Mr. Sinister. So once again, we want to avoid the brood lane. We get Agent Coulson, which does nothing. Now, one, one interesting thing is that we can use Cosmo to prevent Mystique from copying uh, whatever they're doing. 
but we don't have initiative. Um, let's play Captain America for now. They play Shocker. Interesting, they haven't played Patriot on turn three. They might go for the one, two. Like, now I can choose what's going to be our destroyer lane. Let's go for mid, I think, because it just has less cards that don't have an ability. So let's go Barnes, Bucky, mid. And we can also play Colossus. There's no need to float mana. Or we can play Agent Coulson and then next turn play Professor X. We can also do that. Um, or Cosmo. We have a couple options. Let's play Cosmo. Let's just play Cosmo left. They play Kazar. So they probably play something like Ultron. Let's see what they're going to do now. And maybe we can lock the lane and it's going to be very good for us, but we didn't draw Destroyer. So that's not very good. Oh, Magic. Magic is good because it allows us I think magic wins us the game. We can almost for sure snap here. Um, we can Professor... We can essentially Professor X and they don't... They can't even play that many more cards. So I'm gonna snap, play Professor X left and pass the turn. And now we only have to win one more lane and they only... They can only play three more cards they don't have any room they left onslaught they were very greedy with the onslaught citadel and now it's going to bite them because now it's close hobgoblin is also very very good for us because we might be able to get cheeky and slide it into one of their lanes problem is it might also lose us the game so let's play safe let's play warpath and colossus right They play Onslaught, which gives them nothing. Okay, I imagine they'll they'll quit. Um, but they might play Patriot mid, giving them a lot of power, but they don't know is what is that we have Electra. And Electra is going to kill their Misty Knight, taking a lot of their bonus. So they play Blue Marvel. And Squirrel Girl. And we play Electra, killing the Squirrel Girl. And Sunspot giving us the win. And we get four cubes off of a Patriot deck in Onslaught Citadel. Okay, so Atlantis is, a, is an optional destroyer lane. They play Iceman. Icemaning the one card we did not want to get Iceman, so they snipe our Professor X, which is very bad. We'll play Daredevil right. And they continue to harass our hand, which is very rude. Altar of Death again. So we can play Bucky here, and then next turn maybe play Hobgoblin left. They might be a Wong deck. So next turn, we're going to have six energy, meaning we can possibly Professor X and win like the altar. Or just play Hobgoblin and then sacrifice Electra. We have a couple options. Hobgoblin is pretty bad against um, on reveal decks because obviously Odin brings it back to you. They play Ironheart. We get a rock. Okay, so now we have six mana. Um, now with the armor, we can probably just Professor X. Um, the problem is they might wanna Wong left and try to send things to the right. We have Daredevil the next turn, which is gonna be very helpful in helping us snipe Hobgoblin. So I think we're fine with Professor Xing the right lane. They play Wong mid. There aren't many things that they can do with Wong. They can they can play White Tiger, but that just means we win right the mid lane. Oh, they play left. Interesting. Okay, they play Mystique and Psylocke. 
So they're gonna have an additional Wong. So I think we, we got this. Yeah, I think we got it. So we can snap. We can play Hobgoblin here. And yeah, they pretty much have nothing they can do. Even if they play, they can play Odin here and they can only play one card. So the mana doesn't, that doesn't mat matter at all. Um, yeah, what can they do here? It's just GG. There's nothing they can do. I think we can win either lane with uh, Destroyer, but obviously mid is safer one. Yeah, they retreat. All right, Onslaught Citadel. Must be a Patriot deck. Okay, they don't play anything, so less suspicious of a Patriot deck. Okay, Nexus has to be our strongest lane. So let's play Colossus. They play nothing. They give us initiative. Okay, Cosmo is great. Cosmo is great because it means we can play Destroyer here and they cannot Shang-Chi or Enchantress. I'm gonna snap. Cosmo is just insurance. They also snapped. Ooh, it's gonna be a spicy one. What did they play? Cycle. No, it's a Patriot deck. Oh my god, it's a Patriot deck. Oh no. Might still win. Okay, so let's play Warpath left. They don't have a place to play their Brood. Dang. Play Hobgoblin left for annoyance purposes. Abomination? Who the F runs Abomination? What's next? The, the Hulk? Okay, now they play nothing. Okay, Patriot. Wasp. Cosmo. Destroyer. No way by one! Are you fucking kidding me?